Welcome to Jets Nation Radio. I'm Angus Hout. We needed a hiatus week. We weren't fighting or anything. We just needed a break from the podcast. We were all very busy. I drove back from Edmonton. Happy birthday to Oilers Nation. They were fantastic for putting uh, for putting me up at the pint and taking care of some of those. Taking care of that. I also got myself a fantastic hoodie from them. So go check out Nation Gear if you are an Oilers, Flames, or Canucks fan because well, we just don't have Jets Nation Gear like I thought we would. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get yeah. there. We will get there. I tell you what. Um, also, be sure to check out Betway to check out the latest Jets Jets game day odds and bet on the NHL. Thank you, my stutter. Um, how's it going there, Sam and Ray? Well, the Jets are not the worst team in the NHL. <laughs> Maybe Definitely since January, the though. They've been, they're up there right now. Yeah, 2023 has not been kind to the Winnipeg Jets. Anytime we even start to get our hopes up, are just dashed. They haven't really right given here. us a chance to get our hopes up at all. No, well, like early, the first January, I guess, year, wasn't yeah, horrible. We, things yeah. were looking okay. And then, yeah, just all comes tumbling down. We've had a couple yeah, those of two March, games. Those March wins, though, seemed like a, seemed like a, just like a hit and miss thing, like where even if one win in that kind of losing streak, it kind of is like, oh, that's like even more than like a regular win. It's just like, but still not good enough. Yeah, well, it's like so and they get some weird wins here where it's like you got the two wins in Florida. You got the win, ag- the wins against Arizona and Anaheim. But yeah, every other loss is just like this sucks. Like the, the Blues game was just horrid. Yeah, well, they, it was by far the worst. That was uh, that was awful. hard to watch. Yeah. Like Boston, I thought they played well, and I, it's just the Bruins. They're so good. Mm-hmm. Carolina, they were okay. At least they got some scoring. But the you can't get shut out by by the but, Blues. A guy in his like fourth NHL game. Yeah, and it's not even like he had like a hard shutout. Like he was just it was an easy win for him. I was listening to that game uh, coming back home, and like. Paul Edmonds and Jamie Thomas were bored by that game. They didn't say a whole lot. They're just like, blah, blah, blah. we're talking about whatever's going on in their world. Like, this is awful to listen to as a fan. And I'm sure it was pretty much the exact same thing with the LA game yesterday. Cause that was a rough game. I was in the hospital yesterday, so I can't watch it with sound, but uh, yeah, I slipped on my stairs yesterday morning and I whammed my elbow pretty damn good. It was super swollen. And then I went to work and I was like, I can't lift anything. So I went to the hospital <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, it's super duper bruised and there's nothing you can do about it. Good luck. Oh, fun. Nice. Yeah. They gave me a nice tensor bandage though. Your, so your nurse fun. partner couldn't have told you that. <laughs> oh, she told, she's like, well, it could be like Saved a, you a couple life. hours. Oh, I was a little bit rattled, but I got to be a little bit of a complainer and like the, the extra strength Tylenol wasn't cutting it anymore. So she forced me to go. It's probably for the best. It probably was. It would have been, I think I would have preferred a break to be perfectly honest. Like that way I didn't feel like such a punk ass going to the hospital for just a bruise. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, don't fall on your stairs at 6 a.m. in the morning. That is not a good time. Um, No, you got to wait till you get to work. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's what really bothered me is there's tons of ice just sitting outside in the alleyway at work. And I could have slipped on that, but no, I had to do it at home. It's not like I can even sue the homeowner either. Ugh. (laughs) <laughs> but yesterday's uh game in LA that was rough like this team like yeah. we haven't seen even streaks of good greatness from this team like the apathy from the forward group especially like the top end forward group Mark Shifley is uh pretty disgraceful I just I, like why don't they care why have they just given up because they have. It, it's clear. They're not trying. Do they just want to show how great they can be? And then it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want to take, we don't want to play for playoffs like, because like we don't get paid for that. Like that's almost what I feel from Mark Shifley at this point. Cause like, is he mad that he's only making $6 million when other guys get over are, it? You yeah. signed the yeah. fucking contract. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, it's $6 million. And you're not even like, trying anymore. It's like you hit your number of 60 points. Like, oh, whoop, that's it. Shut her down for the year. Like, yeah. Like, I feel like they just like, as soon as like the new year hit, they're just like, oh, we're just kind of like cruising now. And like, kind of like, just like not giving up, but just kind of like 
really drop the amount of effort because they were doing so well to begin with. So when you kind of start cruising at the end of the season, when teams are going to be giving it even extra compared to the beginning, it's like you're not giving your best effort and the teams are probably giving more than what they would originally do. So it's just a formula for not winning games that you probably should. But it's not like it's the whole team. Like, yeah, yeah. like may, like I've seen so much effort from the entire team minus like two to three guys. And we know exactly which two to three guys it is. It's been the same two to three guys for the last two since 2019, 2018. And maybe, and maybe that's the issue. I just like looking at all the skill on this team, the fact they've scored one power play goal in the last like two 25. weeks. 25. Yeah, one one, one for the last 25. That was also a five minute power play as well. Yeah. And, and it was 30 <laughs> seconds left in it. Yeah. It took them four and a half minutes to finally get one. It's like, it's shocking. And that's, you got a point at this point, it's got to be coaching because you need to do. I don't care if you roll out the fourth line. I don't, I would rather have three defensemen on there trying to score than what's been going. Like it's not working. Stop rolling out the same shit, change something up. And I, I don't get how they haven't tried Connor Ehlers and Dubois together because that was one of the hottest lines in the NHL when they were together. They split them up in the middle of that hot streak and no one's been able to score since. Uh, like, why why can't you go back to it? How is Ehlers still getting 12 minutes some nights when the team isn't scoring and he's a guy that can create chances from nothing? I just like at some point you've got to just say like what are the coaches doing here? It's yeah. interesting you're putting more onus on the coaches. Like like obviously I, like- don't get me wrong, it's a lot about the players too. Yeah. But I for me the power play and the the minute distribution like what happened to Bones's oh we're going to hold people accountable bullshit. Which is the only you did it once. Yeah, and like really the only guy who suffered with that is Nate Schmidt. And, and I mean, like, and, and he Schmidt came back from together. He came back from getting health bombed and has been playing his best hockey in two years. Yeah, hundred. I don't know. Try that with Neil Pionk. Try that with Mark Shifley. I like um, Cooper got... in in Tampa, uh, yeah. Tampa. Sat his stars. Yep. He healthy scratched them. Let's see these young guys. Give them a shot because Wheeler and Shifley obviously don't give a fuck. I love that. And man. and it's not like you're going to keep them around past these contracts, anyways. Let's see Morgan Barron get some more ice time. Let's see yeah. Billy get called up. Harkins, like, give these guys who actually look like they give a shit about the hockey some time on the ice. It's absolutely ridiculous. Why, like, why do these players not give a shit? And why are they being rewarded with 22 minutes a night? Yeah, it's like, I, I had seen something somewhere on social media this morning asking, like, well, you know, Mark Shifley doesn't care about the six million dollars. Why do you think he's going to earn nine million dollars with a new contract? Because some moron GM is going to be like, "Yeah, I can give Mark Shifley probably eight million dollars, and he's going to be happy about it." Well, are you telling me? Do you think Nazem Kadri is a better player than Mark Shifley? Zero percent. No. no. He, think like, about the contract that Mark Shifley is going to get next off season. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be huge, think- and he's not going to live up to it. Nope. No, I'm sorry, he's not even living up to six not. million. He's, he's a he's... hell of a player, but he just yeah. doesn't have the heart. It doesn't, and it's everyone always talks. He's like a hockey nerd, and he's always studying. Well, like show some emotion. Mm-hmm. Well, he showed that yeah. he started to show that emotion after he hung out with. Uh, oh, who did he hang out with last summer? Like former uh, Adam Oates. Adam Oates. Yeah. yeah, he hung out with Adam Oates, and like it seemed like Mark Shifley was a changed man, and then. Like, did he hear one criticism one day because he didn't back check hard enough? And then he's like, oh, well, I don't obviously back check. But it's just like, dude, you were actually putting a good effort and someone got mad on Twitter. Like, I want to see the good Mark Shifley again. We know he's a great player and he's just being an ass. And I, until the last like two months, I was like, re-sign him. Let's get this done. Let's make this happen. He's our number one center. But now I'm just. Move on. Yeah. And and him and Connor refusing to talk to the media and then Nino Niederreiter having to go out there and do it when he's been with the team for two fucking weeks and Shifley's been here for a decade. Are you yeah. kidding me? And wears a letter and probably thinks he get should get the C? Not yeah. a chance. 
Yeah, that yeah. was that was the writing on the wall for me. He doesn't get his C. Cause you like how many times has Josh Morrissey he Josh Morrissey came out after last night's game and talked about it. Like at least he can own it. And that's ultimately why he's going to get the the praise that he deserves. Shife probably shouldn't even have an A no, at this point. He no. shouldn't. I would strip it off him. I hope bonus does that this summer. I liked I liked that they gave Dylan the A while Morrissey was out. Yeah, I really I thought that was a good move. Dylan's shown heart this year. I thought he's been solid defensively. He's stood up for guys. He's I I think I've I've liked his game this year, and I was happy to see they recognize that with VA while Morrissey was out. Yeah, definitely. Like I feel like he's just been one of those guys on the back end where he might go unnoticed a lot of nights, but when you realize how much he brings to your team, it's just like. He just kind of does a little bit of everything and is just a rock defensively. So to see that he's getting recognition for what he's been able to bring is really important. Yeah, like 800 career games like that guy and being undrafted. You want to talk about somebody that like legitimately represents like the average Winnipegger? That's the guy. I know he's not from here, but, you know, just you want to see that heart and grit from a guy. Brandon Dillon, yeah. Your yeah, but he came, he came up through the Western League in like the mid 2000s. So he's he yeah. basically grew up in Winnipeg. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like you there there's still lots to like about this team. Like Connor Hellebuck, he's still putting up a decent performance every single night. There's like, a few there's been a few questionable there's been ones. A few, sure. But I mean, he's played so much hockey over the last couple of years, and now he's like in the last couple months he's been still an above average goaltender but he's not saving the team's ass anymore no no and like and that's the difference mm -hmm. and uh, that that i think that's just fatigue setting in that's not even him just you know crying about it (sighs) you know what every single day when i see a new brad lambert highlight on twitter Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of them. I'm so <laughs> damn happy they didn't trade him, Lucius, or McGrody at the deadline. Yeah, like, definitely. I'm so happy. Like, okay, well, it's rebuild time. Thank God they didn't give away those pieces. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, when you say it's rebuild time, what are what are you moving out, Sam? Well, Dubois is for sure gone this offseason. We know that. Um, it's going to be tough to get rid of wheeler's contract shifley you could probably trade in the off season for a decent piece to a contending team who wants him it's like a a full year rental so would do you be go my like guess. a one for one kind like a young prospect for a mark shifley kind of a deal i, I don't know ex- the exact yeah. what the return would be um but i mean better, like it, be, better be more than a single prospect because i mean you get a a one b center on a contender because like he probably won't be the top center for a team that he's going to, but he could be like an unbelievable second center and have like two top lines essentially. Um, So I think you need for sure more than that. If you're going for a full season, I I would say like minimum first round pick and a prospect Mm -hmm. you see what uh, I guess some of the guys who got traded for more this year had some more term, but maybe this team, they have a year to talk to him. Maybe they'll get him re-signed or something. But I think him and then as the year goes on, I would imagine Wheeler probably gets dealt to a contender. Um, same with like basically all the UFAs. I hope they re-sign Hellebuck because I he's not as replaceable as everyone else. Yeah. Um, but like Nita Ryder will probably see get traded in the latter half of the year. Um, that one kind of sucks. I like Nino Nita Ryder. Uh, yeah, but he, it's not like he's going to stay on a rebuilding team. I guess at so. this point in his career. Um, the Dillons probably because they're both UFAs next year. Uh, DeMello and. So you're like Brent, totally Brendan clear. Dillon. You're one well, you have to. Times. All of these guys are UFAs. They're going to be gone at the end of next summer anyways. So, But like you can't build a team in the off like in, uh, as in free agency like that's just foolish at that point no but like, you're getting draft capital yeah so what we're just gonna depend on the manager I mean, moves to come up here and just you know play well uh, eventually hockey? you need to do you want to just sit in this limbo of yeah fucking two home playoff games a year maybe 
or even worse, getting like just missing the playoffs, getting like 13th overall picks every year. Like it's going to suck, but eventually something needs to be done. And there are some good young core pieces you can build around. I mean, you and you still have Josh Morrissey for six years. Like these are guys, I mean, that was so Niederreiter, Shifley, Wheeler, and the Dillons. That's five players. If you like, it's not, you're not blowing everything up. You still have Connor for three years. You still have Ehlers for a couple of years. Morrissey's signed for a handful of years. You get guys like, I think Dylan Sandberg can be a good partner for Morrissey going forwards. Okay, I great. do. So you got Neil Pionk, Dylan Sandberg, and Josh Morrissey. You oh, if you could trade Pionk too, I'd be happy. You also, <laughs> dude, look, look at the Manitoba Moose decor. They're yeah. so fucking good. Oh yeah, yeah. The decor is good, but I'm like They're curious so what your good. forward group would look like. You're gonna tell me that. Okay, like, so who, you who's going I mean, to step? Up? You're gonna get Adam Lari to or Stenland to jump up onto the center line with with uh, Connor Rutger McGordy. Okay, he's Brad two, Lambert. So, oh, 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 hold on. McGordy's got, not two years away. He's two years away. I no, he, he's not. Okay, I guess he's still one more year away. Like yeah. not next year, but the year after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think Chaz Lucius is going to be a hell of a player. Hopefully, he he can recover from that surgery well. I mean, Brad Lambert is just like he's going to be on the Jets next year. He just will. He's played pro before. Like, it's time to start letting these young guys play. It'll be the, probably the most exciting Jets. Like, they're not going to win a lot of games, let's be honest. But it'll think- be some of the most exciting Jets hockey we've watched in a while because it's guys who are trying. And that might just be what the fans need, even if it's a losing and, season. And I mean, like, what are we going to do? Keep some of these guys around and lose them in free agency next year anyways? You might as well try and get some draft picks. Yeah. Like, why yeah. would you let them walk for nothing? And then they're probably not going to resign here. Yeah. And then with that too, is like you get the assets for trading like one of the Dillons or both of the Dillons. And then it allows you to bring up someone like Enola or Chisholm so they can elevate their game to actually get some more NHL games and actually like build up with the core rather than just playing a guy that's in their like mid mid to early 30s who might just leave after a year or two. I would love for them to resign Dillon. If you're getting rid of Shifley, You can re-sign Dylan and give him an A. Oh, 100%. I yeah. was actually going to say. I, 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 and I Dylan DeMello. I'd love for them to re-sign Dylan DeMello, too. Get rid of Schmidt and Pionk. You're yep. good. Yeah. Like, really nothing against, like, Nate Schmidt. He's done really, like, this the last little bit, he's done really well for the team. But he did bring a good light to the team when it was the darkest. But, yeah, that contract's too heavy. And, yeah, let some of these young – I get it where you got to let some of the young guys go because, like, you know, why are we sitting Logan Stanley every night? I think he would be a lot better if he was getting consistent playing time. And like Declan Chisholm, second on the Moose in points. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like he's fifth. Hanol is sixth. Like there's some good young D-men. Mm-hmm. It's going to be exciting that year. So you're like, do you think the Jets are going to kind of look like the, not nearly as bad, but kind of like the Arizona Coyotes this year? Where I was thinking more good. Ducks. Ducks. Nice. But, but I mean, if you have a like a good young core, and if you can re-sign Connor Hellebuck, like it's not like you're gonna get blown out of the water because you still have one of the best goalies in the world, mm-hmm. and it's a good chance for these young guys to get some playing time, cut their teeth, and actually like start growing. Well, I think the difference between Anaheim, Anaheim doing that, and Winnipeg doing that is just simply the the fan base like just the amount of ignorant people who would be like oh the jets are losing it's all connor hallibuck's fault and like you know it's already been the narrative without even getting to that point so people i think like yeah people are dumb we know this and you know anyone that listens to this podcast you're a genius so like continue to listen and tell your friends about it because they'll be geniuses too uh you're uh, probably idiots too oh <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to kiss ass samuel don't i'm going away. after everyone i'm sad <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. one's safe no one is safe <laughs> hey like and subscribe to our podcast um yeah, yeah. please please Idiots. we're no longer on the na- no. <laughs> <laughs> we're no longer on the nation networks podcast stream so like yeah they kicked us off of youtube sad so yeah apparently it was a it was a whole nation network thing i just got emailed about it recently so um surprise <laughs> 
<laughs> I forgot to tell you guys about that in our pre-meeting notes. Um, so Ray, you're a little more uh, into the prospects. What do you think of that goalie we have in North Bay? Uh, I think he's done really good, and I feel like he like like not being like biased or all at all here, but like looking at some of the other like Canadian goalies in just like the whole CHL, I feel like he has a really good chance at kind of making a statement on, hey, I should be that world junior goalie and kind of be able to build off of that. And I feel like he definitely could be like a guy that you don't really see coming, but then as soon as you kind of notice him more, it's like, damn, this guy is actually like really good and like can really bring something that you don't really think from a seventh round pick goalie. So I feel like he definitely could be like, kind of like the succeeder to Hellebuck in the future, like when, like, but that'd be years down the line. But I feel like he definitely could be a goalie where you, you get more out of him than you think you would. How many years does he have left in junior? Like, are we going to see him in the moose in a couple of years or? I think he has, I think he's eligible for two more years in the OHL. So he can go back next year and the year after. So he could really like, but, with how he's playing, like you could make the argument that like he should be in a way be eligible for the AHL, depending on the goalie situation there. But yeah. I feel it's like time to get more... him some better yeah. quality opponents. Like he... Yeah, I feel like he'll spend one more year after after this year in the OHL to really like hone his game and be able to like potentially go for a mem- memorial cup, but I feel like after that year, like, I feel like he has a strong case to be the backup for the Moose. So I he's only like 19 he's... as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And he's set in records. This is, yeah. Love to records. See it. Yeah. So I don't know how to pronounce his name. That's why I just asked. Devincensis. <laughs> Devincensis. I don't know. It'll, be, I'll learn it once he's on the yeah. Moose. <laughs> yeah. Man, he seems like a cool kid. I listened to a couple of his interviews. He, I'm I'm excited to be getting this guy with us. And like, if if Connor Halbuck could men- mentor him, like if the Jets could get like a three year extension with Connor Halbuck and be like, hey man, you know, mentor this kid, and, and by the end of it, if you guys want to tag team this and hopefully win your cup together, that'd be sweet. But you know, hypotheticals in a dream situation, right? I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just want to see Connor Hellebuck lift a Stanley Cup in Winnipeg. It's all I want out of this life. He deserves yes, it. He will. Oh, absolutely. Um I guess to, do you do you guys think the Jets deserve a playoff spot at this point? No. No. I, I I'll <laughs> say they do, just because the fact of how well they played at the beginning of the season and like kind of like the difference between like there's such a kind of large contrast from how well they were playing at the beginning of the season to kind of where they are now, where like just like a couple months ago, we were saying how they have the best points percentage in the entire Western Conference. So it's like to go from the one of the best teams in the entire Western Conference to being mm-hmm. in the second wild card spot. I feel like I feel like this team just has a lot more to kind of show that like, hey, we are this team from the first half, but they have to make it first. So I feel like if they make it to the playoffs, I think they deserve to be there. And like, there could be times where they could make the playoffs, but like, they just won't do anything. And I feel like that's the time where you want to have a competitive playoff. So if they go into the playoffs and it's like a five game series, like we, we can question whether it was even really worth it for them to even be there. But I feel like with how the team has performed up till now, if they can find a way to make it and become the team they were at the beginning of the season, I feel like they really have a shot to kind of kind of surprise a team that like we're in a second wild card spot. So we're going to go up against like probably the best team in the West. So to be able to just kind of surprise that team, kind of like how Dallas did last year in the first round with Ottinger being a really good goalie in that series, I feel like we could do something pretty similar. Yeah. I, I would almost argue the reason they don't deserve to be in the playoffs is because when they, when we were talking about them being like top in the Western conference and I, and I was as high on them as anyone, but they weren't playing the most sustainable hockey. There was a lot during the start first half of the season where Connor Hellebuck was stealing games. And I think what we're seeing now is a little more of the true colors of the jets 
unfortunately. Uh, guys who don't really have that go in them, like don't really have that the fight in them. Like it's there's a lot of games where guys are just kind of rolling over. It feels like like Shifley last night in almost 20 minutes was a minus two had no shots on net. And that would probably included what, like six or seven minutes of power play time, not a single shot on net for a guy that's supposed to have this great release. I just, I, I, I it just doesn't feel like it did in 2018. And I know you're not going to go into the playoffs every year on a hot streak as the second overall team in the entire league, but you just need to show some heart down the stretch. And the jets really have not done that. Yeah. This is more reminiscent of 2019 where, you know, wasn't this on like that team was on pace to be one of the best teams in the NHL. And then the train crashed hard. And it's going to be yeah. the exact same thing. And I wouldn't be shocked if Dino Niederreiter, when he's done with the Jets, is like, that was the most disorganized and dysfunctional locker room I've ever been in. Like, you know, you, I just don't know how anyone could look at me and tell me that, that there's something good going on with that locker room. I mean, Scott Billick pointed it out earlier this week where it's just like, you know, why does the coach need to motivate his boys? Shouldn't millions of dollars be motivation? Yeah, yeah, right. Do not even that. Shouldn't the love of the game be the motivation? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Like, just play. With I watched. Drive. I watched three different fights in rec hockey last weekend. That's the love of the fucking <laughs> game. That's <laughs> the love of the goddamn game. God bless those boys up in the parkland. Man, and the the. Dolphin Rec Hockey Tournament tourney three games in a row ended in fights. It's it was, was it wild. like full on line brawls. Uh, there were two started with slashes to the face. Nice. Uh, th- the one that was in my game, I was actually already in the box, which was I was just standing in the tunnel essentially, and uh, they there was a bit of a scrap. Both players got kicked out. So our player was go, but our teams were on the same side. So we had to use the same tunnel. So our player was going down the tunnel and their player flew off the ice and attacked him. It was insane. Yeah. Uh, right in front of me. Rory, the lion. Sorry. Ha- oh, sorry. Sorry. R- uh, Rory, the lion had to do some security guarding for uh, some Swan river players to make sure that nobody uh, decided to run rampant after a big fight uh, in an MJ game last season. <laughs> so like yeah basically it's like all right let's go <laughs> yeah it's uh <laughs> it's a good time <laughs> it's a great time i love oh man yeah and also congratulations to you winning whatever the cup is yeah the beer belly cup beer belly cup <laughs> love it yeah that was, that was a good time don't remember a lot from friday night but uh got the game winner or the championship winner i guess oh, really oh so, yeah <laughs> big old congratulations to you um World Cup of Hockey. I mean, obviously, like everyone's talked about it. McDavid made a big old comment about it last week. You know, where is our World Cup of Hockey? I was even thinking about it right before the World Cup of or World Baseball Championship. World Baseball Classic. There we go. Um, yeah, it was just like, you know, Ohani versus Trout for your finals. Like, you know, where's our Andre Vasileski versus Connor Hellebuck in double overtime? That would mean that that Canada is not in it. <laughs> yeah, I know. But like, let's be real. Our goaltending isn't going to get us a, any sort of gold at this point. So I'm I'm a little of two minds there because yes, that was a great finish, but you look at what happened to the Mets, and they lost their ace start or their ace uh, closer, Edwin Diaz, for the entire season. Not even during the play, he was celebrating. And I think like tore his bicep or something. But so now a team that was supposed to be a World Series contender this year just lost their best player. But they that was the only injury sustained. So that was not the only injury sustained. There were a few. Was it? I swear there was a few. There was another guy that's going to be out not the whole season, but for a couple of weeks. And I mean, that's when all of this hockey stuff started was when Carey Price got hurt in the 2014 Olympics. Or something like that. It, like there was a big injury Steven in Stamkos uh, in fourteen. Oh, okay, Stamkos he, in fourteen. Yeah, he snapped his uh, leg uh, flying into the 
Yeah. So, yeah. and that's when all of this stuff started. So like, I get, I get the owners not wanting to risk that. Like, I, I want to see it. I want the players, especially in the Olympics or in the world cup or something like that. I want them there so badly, but I definitely get the NHL not necessarily wanting to risk it. And that's why I think the world cup is, was different because the NHL had control over that. Um, but and like they it, got money from it. <laughs> it would be great if we could also talk to like the SHL and like all those Euro uh, leagues minus the KHL for obvious reasons until things kind of get settled with that if they ever do. But, you know, if we could get all the Euro teams as well, like that would be so much more fun if, you know. You well, there, there were there were uh, Europeans they, yeah. from other leagues in the World Cup. Did they? Okay, I, yeah. I can't. I just blanking on that. I was like, was it? Yeah, it NHL was like the now? NHL hosted the tournament, but there were other guys as well. It wasn't just NHL. Then great. Players. Do it again. Like and like they should make it happen. Like I know they're like, oh, well, not until at least 2025. Put it out this spring or not this spring, this fall. Like, Do you I think get... they let Russia play? Probably not. No, I'm sure not that yet. they would go. Or should to... they? Should they? No, I... absolutely not. What, okay, but what about the guys that are playing here in North America? Do you give them, like, untitled country? I hate that they let them do that in the Olympics because, and I, I get it, you don't want to punish the athletes, but they're, they're I know they're, it's not a Russian flag, but they're Olympic athletes of Russia. So there's, they still have that Russian pride. They won a, the gold medal in hockey. So they still get that Russian pride, which is what you're trying to, like, I, I know they're not wearing the flag, but we all know where they're from. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I just, and I get not wanting to punish the athletes, but then you're really not doing anything. No, but I mean, like, why would you take Kucherov out of that situation? Would you not want to see like a Kucherov versus why would, Crosby? Like, I, I just, yeah, I just but why would you let kind of Ovechkin, stuff. who's, staunchly supported Putin through all of this play. Well, well, then why do you let him play in the NHL? If the NHL is running this, get your money. If, you, if you're if you looking at this as, I, well, I guess they can't play because of billionaires. Well, I guess they can't play because, or they can play because of billionaire reasons. Like, I don't know. What I just, I like, I don't know. I like, think you, like, it, it's a sanction. And I think you put it on them. We're not going to get political, okay. but. Yeah, like you and I agree that Putin is a war criminal. We both despise the guy. Just a difference of opinion when it comes to the hockey. Yeah. 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 Um, also, uh, because Chicago canceled their gay night or their pride night for um you gotta say things correctly here, Angus. Uh they're uh just because of safety concerns, I assume because of their Russian players. Do you think it, uh Winnipeg would do the same because of Nemexikov? No, and no. I'm going to be so pissed if they didn't. I mean, Sergey Bobrovsky wore one last week. Great. We Fantastic. have a picture of we have a picture of Svech when he was with the Jets last year wearing one. Like I'm going to be that's the thing that'll make me stop watching games is if the Jets cancel their pride night. Like this terrible play, I'm I've still been watching the games, not quite as intently as before. Yeah. But I'm still watching them. That I, I think I'd be out like this for like, obviously not permanently, but I just just for the rest. Of the I'm season. not standing behind a team that's going to do that. I don't think they will. No, I think I they realize think how much of a mistake yeah. that would be. It's different in Canada and the States as well. Oh, a thousand percent. And like, yeah, I, I would be very shocked if any of the Jets players backed out of it. What? Um, and I'd be disappointed. I would, you you know, know what? Good for the Oilers. Good for Matthew Kachuk, who I hate. Yeah, right. What is what, what a way to stand up against two asshole teammates? Well, yeah, and like veteran teammates, like guys that were once very respected in this league, and the captains and, in this league, captains in this league, and two. Uh, so yeah, rare Kachuk win. Um, you know, I've and still... yeah, good for McDavid, good for Hyman, all these guys that are coming out in support. Awesome, awesome, yeah. And like, you know what? I really, really like, I agree with the free speech that like, you know, if they wanted to back out, whatever, but I genuinely hope that some Christian leader talks to those boys and like tells them, it's like, no, Hey man, Jesus would have loved them just the same as he loves you. That's what I want out of this. I really hope that they smarten up. Well, how about Eric Stahl? Someone being yeah. like, yeah, there's photo evidence of you wearing a, a <laughs> hockey's for everyone Jersey in Montreal. And he goes, I never wore one. Yeah. Fuck you didn't. On, Here's man. a video of you, you dumbass. Yeah. 
Like yeah. at that point, you got to be just like, well, I, I don't know. I've changed my opinions. Okay. Yeah. How about you getting arrested on your bachelor party? It's a nice mugshot that's been making its way around. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just don't think the dunking on them with their mugshot is the way to change them and, you know, get them to believe in this community. How about not working on, on Saturdays? So, uh, oh, whoa, whoa, that's Sundays, Seventh Day Adventist. Yeah. That's different. We don't believe in that. No, it's um, I don't know. Either way, yeah, fucking, Listen, you're man, not supposed to, you're not supposed to wear. <laughs> yeah, I, I only went to Catholic school for <laughs> six years. I probably should know some of this. Oh yeah, shit. I'm from the other <laughs> side of the aisle on that one. I'm Mr. Baptist um, boy. But I mean, what about not wearing uh blended clothing? You're not Ble supposed to do that. Why? Well, like, if you're gonna if you're gonna use the Bible as an excuse be fucking consistent right yeah like yeah. don't don't use it to spread hate hateful bullshit and then turn around and not follow anything else yeah i wonder how That's many of those guys were say. uh pure until they well actually never mind we're not gonna get into it because i don't want to do this this is a sports podcast darn it yeah some <laughs> things need to be said though yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, that's that's what's fun about this podcast is you don't know what you're going to get. You're going to get to some fun stuff. Um, man, uh, Ray, before we uh, wrap this bad boy up, yeah. you were you said you got something for us. So, oh, I like for your first segment on one positive player. I was going to I wasn't even going to say a player. I was going to say uh, a prospect they just signed in Parker Ford. Yes. From Providence. So I just think that he brings a lot of kind of different things that I feel like we've been like lacking in our bottom six with a four checking kind of energy guy. And I feel like those words kind of reminisce with some with uh, Brandon Tanev. So if he can become anything like he was, I was going to say that was the guy that is a one positive for the organization as a whole. Ooh. Yeah. He's That's a small, hard four checking guy by the sounds of it. Just a just, bit of a honey. Bring some heart. I think he was the captain yeah. at Providence college. Yeah. Um, actually, I, I like how we blew past, past the, let's start off with saying one positive thing because <laughs> we're all so angry about it, but I'll, I'll, uh, say one too. Adam Lowry's turned his game around. He has. He's, I mean, every, all of our centers still need to work on the face-offs, but he had uh, one good game of face-offs. He's got two game-winning goals in the last four, uh, and the tying goal against Nashville. So hell yeah, the Laos. I think it's Mason Appleton that brings out the best in Adam Lowry. I would like to see Morgan Barron get more time because yeah. I also think he's been fantastic. The three of those guys on a line is like yeah. one of my favorite lines in hockey. Yeah. But I mean, you can't have Nemestikov on the fourth line. So no, which is sad, but yeah. like, because <laughs> Nemestikov also works really well, uh, like with the Jets. Yeah. I, I've liked his game as well, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He brings a certain extra fire and, I mean, if everyone was bringing it like they were, like Nemesikov, what like he wouldn't stick out like a sore thumb. Maybe something will work. We've got how many games left? Ten ish. Eight, nine, eight, eight, nine, whatever. Something, yeah. maybe something will click, and the boys will come into playoffs hot. I really hope so. I I would love to have like win six of the last eight, dominate all of those games, beat down both Nashville and Calgary. What a way to end the season. Yeah. Jets hold their own destiny. They really do. They've yeah. got one of the best goaltenders in the league. They just need to score three goals a game. One a period. That's it. Yeah. They're probably Instead of one a game? Them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, if the Jets could score three goals a game, there's such a, like, what is their record? It's like 35-4-1 and one when they score three or more goals a game. Which is nuts. Insane. Just score your three goals there, boys. It's not that hard. <laughs> Easier said than done. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> says the guy sitting in his porch. Looks pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you just put me out there. I'll stand right in front of the net. We got the old Ryan Smith wood stick. I'll score you some goals. Love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, and, you know what that sucked about the Jets? It's like the power play just dried up. Oh, it's like it's always one thing that just dries up and it kills the rest of the game. Like the power play, obviously, in the last bit, but before that it was the 
five on five where they could not get a five on five goal. It just to be fair, they still can't get a five on five goal. <laughs> that too, uh, but <laughs> in like, a couple games. <laughs> like thank God the the penalty kill has been you know the second best in the league this year. Yeah, and hey, penalty uh, shorthanded goal the other day too. Yeah, Lowry and Barron, what a play. And man, and like you love like almost every game you see that out of Adam Lowry where he just shoots the puck up the ice and like onto someone's stick or he's hustling down the ice and going for a, a shorty. How about getting Morgan Barron some power play time? How about getting he's Morgan Barron more time, period? Yeah. Like he's going yeah. to he like man, when I said he was Andrew Cop light, I wasn't expecting him to probably leave in the same fashion as Andrew Cop, where it's like, I want my money, but you guys don't even have playing time for me. Okay. Trade me for another. Like, how guy. is he on our fourth line? Right? I, yeah, I feel like it's just like they don't want to play Nemestikov fourth line, but they they like they kind of have like two third liners that they want to play third line. So it's just like one of them is just kind of forced to go down there. Spread out the bottom six then yeah. and play them all more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Or here's an idea. Sit your top line, get them off for a night, get them really pissed off, and then get them back out the next game. And if they want to continue to, if Mark Shifley wants to continue to be a big piss baby about it, sit him for the rest of the season. I don't care. I know it's $6 million oh, sitting okay. up in your in your press box, but whatever, man. You Get Nemestikov out there. He's a center. Yeah, he, was, he, he was looked good as two C when Dubois was injured. Yeah, like I, I, I'm serious. Just sit Mark Shifley. Like he, I just don't feel like he's a Jet anymore. Yeah, he just doesn't it's seem to look to like happen. last. It's starting to look like last season almost at the yeah. end, where he's doesn't know if the Jets are going to be his future with how he's playing. So it's almost and he's just kind of, of floating around. I mean, like play better I put a little effort in like even if you're struggling work your ass off mm-hmm. goals come to those who work hard or we could just maybe maybe Mark Shifley needs to call up Aaron Rodgers be like yo man can you get me to your shaman get him back on the line because something needs to change and maybe we got to go into drastic Joe Rogan I don't know here. if you want to go that direction <laughs> I, I'm all in on it I think that's what needs to happen here he needs Speaking like you of bad teammates <laughs> <laughs> how could you say anything negative about Aaron Rodgers do you want me to go get some purple on and go get, how much well, time do you have I, I've got all afternoon here <laughs> This is my Saturday, so I'm I'm enjoying my day. Either way, that's all I've got. What do you guys got? This is why I don't need therapy, is because I get to come on here and bitch. <laughs> so I think you, you get guys. to bully me just a little bit too, so it really helps you. And like and subscribe yeah. so I continue to come on here and bitch. <laughs> yeah, man, like and subscribe. Don't want Tell to your friends about, about his outlet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, imagine how bad the news in Dolphin would be if Sam didn't have a proper outlet. Exactly. <laughs> Going off the rails. Well, man, uh, I won't get into it because I have made fun of the people of Dolphin earlier this week, and I don't want them to hate me because they're pretty good people for the most part. Either way, Sam, where can we find you out in the world after people yeah, like and subscribe uh, to this podcast? Like and subscribe to the podcast first and foremost. And then it's uh, S Brownell twelve on Twitter and Sam Brownell Radio on Instagram. Sick, Ray. What about you? Uh, you can find me at Ray dot How or Brad Lambert is him on Instagram. And yeah, go subscribe to the podcast and hope that the Jets win some games. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast already, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you can follow Jets Nation on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook. Give me a follow, Angus Hout, on Twitter and Instagram. I'm going to try posting a little bit more. Um, also, if you see me out and about uh, with either 921 City or 1023 Kiss here in Winnipeg, feel free to stop by and say hi. Maybe you'll win tickets to something. I mean, Ray, if you ever want tickets in Winnipeg, <laughs> I can hook you up. I'm the I'm a, I, I got that job. <laughs> it's cool. Might a, no might no one else drive. asked. For, yeah, come out for a drive. It's well <laughs> worth it. It's beautiful driving through Ontario, man. Come, like out towards yeah. uh, Thunder Bay. Gorgeous. Also, if you're in Thunder Bay, subscribe. Have a great week, guys.